how to calculate restaurant food cost. I know for a fact, this is one of the most frequently searched terms on YouTube. Heck, I have several videos on my channel alone just about this topic. So why am I doing yet another video on food cost? Because you, my faithful followers, have been asking me to teach it using visual examples. So I've listened, here we go. Hey, The Restaurant Pro, this is Dave Scott Peters, restaurant expert, coach, and creator of The Restaurant Prosperity Formula. And today I'm gonna to take a deep dive into calculating your food costs using visuals. Let's dive right in. So I'm gonna break up on the screen here. We should be side by side. You're gonna see a spreadsheet, simple Google sheet. And I'm gonna walk you through where the numbers come from, how they fit together, and I'm gonna bust a myth or two. So here we go. If we look at this, we've got a date range and you're gonna notice that in this example, even though it says 2020 and we're well past that, doesn't matter, it's an example, but you're gonna notice it's for a week. See, in a perfect world, we are gonna be calculating our food costs on a weekly basis. Why? Not monthly. Why? Because we have software nowadays that we can get this done in a snap. We can take inventory in under an hour. I have $2 million restaurants who take inventory in under an hour. And they know their food costs right away. They know their poor costs, bottle beer, draft beer, wine, liquor. It's the same, but we're just focusing on food right now. The math is the same. So I want you to look at weekly because when you have a problem and you discover it in one week, and let's say it's the first week of the month, you have three weeks to fix it. Instead of talking to your chef and go, hey, uh, you know, 15 days in the next period, you're talking about last month. Hey, chef, your food cost is high. The first thing that's gonna come out of your chef's mouth is, oh, no, no, not my food cost is not high. Those aren't my numbers. Your accountant's wrong. But even if your, your chef or kitchen manager said, oh man, that's horrible. Let me start to fix it. Well, they've made the same dumbass mistake for 15 days in a row, and now you're asking them to fix it, it's too late. So weekly inventory is very, very important. So let's look at this. We look at row seven here. It says beginning inventory. When does that inventory come from? Last period. In this case, it would be last week, the last day of the period. It could be for a month. It could be for 62 days. It doesn't matter. What was the last inventory when it was taken? Then we've got purchases. Purchases are all the invoices that show up your back door. Doesn't matter if you paid for them or not. We're on something called accrual accounting, earn OUs. So if you earn the money, you're going to show it to the government as money that's come in. So if you had a catering that you didn't collect the money, doesn't matter. Party happened. You're going to pay taxes on that revenue if you made an in earnings, right? Or earn O. Well, if Cisco, US Foods, Benny Keith, any broadline distributor drops off food, any small local mom and pop distributor drops off food and they give you an invoice because you're on 30 days, 60, 90 day terms, doesn't matter, a week, a day. Even though you didn't write a check, it's an expense that day. So it's really important that we understand that. Earn OUs, that's where we come into here. We're gonna calculate what use is and it takes inventories. You must be taking a weekly inventory. So now here we go. If we look at this, we've got our beginning inventory, $7,250.36. We have our purchases during that week of $7,777.73. If I add those together, begin inventory plus purchases, we come up with $15,028.09. That is row nine. Hopefully you see that clearly. So now we take an ending inventory. When do I take the ending inventory at the end of the what? The period. In this case, a week. Again, doesn't matter if it's 62 days, 93 days, 365, that would be bad. But let's call it a week, shall we? Because that's what you need to work towards. So I take an ending inventory of $7,527.34. And in doing so, I've got beginning inventory plus purchases. Says I could have sold $15,000 in product that week. I take an ending inventory of $7,500. I subtract that from the $15,000 I could have sold. And that gives me row 11 use of $7,500.75. That's what left the shelves. Now, how do we use product? Well, the number one way we hope we use it is we sell it. We're in the business to sell product. Well, there's waste and spoilage. So when you buy too many tomatoes and a half a case goes bad, that's cost of goods sold. You brought in a certain amount of money but you, own, you already used this much in product, dollar value, doesn't matter you didn't get any money for it. So if it's stolen, oh, if somebody steals it, that's product you use, you don't get money for. And then there's 
comps that aren't in the register. Meaning if I'm using a POS system and I ring up a, a say $15 burger and I comp it for a guest because I love them, we, or we did something wrong and I, I, I had to take care of the guest, doesn't matter what it is. Your chef, your kitchen manager is going to get to $15. They get the gross sales, sales before discounts. So those comps are in there. We're not worried about that. I'm talking about the comps as you as an owner, that if you want to, you know, take tax advantage of your business and you say you're going to have a party this weekend, you pull up your truck to the back of the restaurant, you put a keg in there and, uh, you know, a couple bottles of Tito's and Jack Daniels and you have burgers and buns and ribs and you just put it all in the back of your truck, you drive off. Well, that's use. That product's gone, but it's nowhere to be seen. So now you're about to yell at your kitchen manager, or your chef. Why is your food cost high? And you did it because it's been used. See this, I'm going to show you in a moment here again, the, this is math. It's blind. It doesn't know how it got used. That's why we need all these other systems, key item trackers, waste trackers, inventory systems, recipe costing cards. And a part of what you're going to do is you're going to write it down on that, on that waste sheet, because you're going to show the kitchen manager that yes, you took product, that you're going to give them a little leeway on that. And they can look you in the eye and say, my food cost is high, but you took $500 in product. And if I remove that from use, I'm on, I'm on budget. That's important. See owners, we as managers don't care what, what you do with your product. What we care about is what are the rules? How are you going to hold me accountable if I don't know what the rules are? So that's important. So again, in review, beginning inventory plus purchases is what I could sell. Minus ending inventory gives me use, sold, wasted, spoiled, stolen, or you took it out the back door. So when we look at this row 11, the $7,500, that's how much product left the shelves. It has no idea. It's math. But now we come down to row 12 and we have our sales, gross sales. Remember the ring at the register before the discounts have been removed. In this case, this week, we did $28,154 and two cents in sales. Well, the equation is use divided by sales. Use $7,500 and 75 cents divided by sales, $28,154 and two cents. That gives us row 13, a food cost of 26.64%. That is your actual food cost. That doesn't mean that's your ideal food cost where you should be based on if what your customers ordered and if you've followed recipe costs and cards perfectly, which will never happen. This is what it actually is. This is what your food cost is. This means for every dollar that came in in food sales, you use 26.64 cents on every dollar. It's almost like a 3D printer, right? $1 and the 3D printer starts printing some French fries, $2, a little more French fries, $3 starts printing more French fries. Next thing you know, $4, it starts to you know, do the secondary side, your coleslaw until all of a sudden we're at $10 and it starts printing the burger until the whole plate is there. Right? Does that make sense? For every dollar that comes in, you use 26 cents, or in this case, 26.64 cents in product. That's what cost of goods sold is. Now I want to bust a myth real quick. A lot of people say to me, David, I've been in the restaurant business a long time, and I was taught that you don't order product at the end of the week or the end of the month because it'll make your food costs go high, and it's wrong. I want to show you this real quick. I'm going to open up this hidden formula here, or this column, I should say. Notice here that my beginning inventory, row seven, is the exact same, 7250, 7250. My purchases, however, in the first example that I went through with you is $7,777. In my second example, it's $10,777. $3,000 more dollars in product was purchased. Now, most people go, oh my gosh, I, my food cost is going to be out of control. Well, let's look at this. It means I could have sold $15,000 versus $18,000, but I take an ending inventory of $7,500 in the original example, and in the new example, $10,500. 527 to be exact. I subtract that from my total available and you'll notice 11, row 11, $7,500, 75 cents, $7,500 and 75 cents. All this says is, ah, what I've done is taken $3,000 out of my bank account or my back pocket, put it on the shelves to be at risk, to be stolen, wasted, spoiled, right? Because I have too much, people are going to take it. They're going to misuse it. And the last time I checked, I can't go to the power company with a case of ribs and go, thud, we're even, they want money. 
So it's important that when we focus on food costs and we think about percentages, what pays your bills, cash or profits? Cash does. We've got to be looking at cash as well. Because ultimately, look at this in the same equation, use divided by sales, the sales are both $28,154, both costs of goods sold are 26.64%. Hopefully, that's the visual representation of how to calculate food costs you've been asking for. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there's more to it. There's four calculations. I can guarantee put more money in your bank account. We'll do that another time. But right now, the lesson is, it is beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending gives us use. Use divided by sales gives our food cost percentage. And it's important to understand you need to be working towards putting inventories in place. For those you've been following me for any length of time, there's a food costing software that I recommend to all my members, and that's Margin Edge. In order to get a demo, and I've got no affiliation, I get no, no money from them, no nothing. This is because they work so well with my members. Go to marginedge.com forward slash DSP for David Scott Peters, and you're going to set up a call with Bruce. And the reason why I want you to go to Bruce is I know for a fact Bruce is a 30 plus year veteran of the restaurant business. He knows his shit. He'll take care of you. You're not going to get the 20 year old who's reading a script. This guy is a gem. And he'll know you came through me and he'll give you a white glove service. So you want to use that link. Again, hopefully I helped you with uh, your food costs today. Now it's your turn to go out there and get the information to make it possible. Be sure to join me live every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific time on YouTube, travel schedule permitting, where I'll get you pumped about the upcoming weekend, get you excited about crushing your goals and finding the motivation to be best you possible. Plus, I'll answer your burning questions live.